What would happen if Antarctica's dormant, ice-covered volcanoes suddenly wake up? Well, we've recently found that Antarctica has the biggest concentration of volcanoes in any place on Earth. And we've also recently found that a new volcano is developing underneath the western part of Antarctica, the area that has uh, the biggest volcanic range in the world. And it's also coincidentally the area of the Antarctica ice shelf melting. This is on the conversation. Antarctica, the vast icy wasteland covered by the world's largest ice sheet. And this ice sheet contains about 90% of fresh water of the planet. It acts as a massive heat sink and its meltwater drives the world's oceanic circulation. It exists, the existence is therefore a fundamental part of Earth's climate. Without this, we would be perhaps uh, very hot as a, as a planet. Now, it's, in a way, it uh, helps the circulation, the air and water currents, and it cools us down. Less well known is that Antarctica is also host to several active volcanoes, part of a huge volcanic province which extends for thousands of kilometers along the western edge of the continent. And this is, by the way, the area that has all the ice melt that uh, the uh, climate environmentalists believe is caused by global change, global uh, heating, global warming, whereas geologists believe it's basically due to volcanic activity under the ice. They've even recently, if you see the video before this one, they've uh, found a new volcano in that volcanic range. Now, although the volcanic province, the article goes on to say, has been known and studied for decades, about 100 new volcanoes recently discovered beneath the ice by scientists who use satellite data and ice penetrating radar to search for these hidden peaks. These sub ice volcanoes may be dormant, but what if what would happen if Antarctica's volcanoes wake up? We can get some idea by looking into the past. One of Antarctica's volcanoes, Mount Takahe, is found close to the remote center of the West Antarctic ice sheet. In a new study, scientists implicate Takahe in a series of eruptions rich in ozone consuming halogens that occurred about 18,000 years ago. These eruptions, they claim, triggered an ancient ozone hole, warmed the southern hemisphere, which caused glaciers to melt and helped bring the last ice age to a close. This sort of environmental impact is unusual. For it to happen again would require a series of eruptions similarly enriched in halogens from one or more volcanoes that are currently exposed above the ice sheet. And we do have some volcanoes in Antarctica exposed above the ice sheet. Such a scenario is unlikely, though. As the Takahi study shows, it's not, pos not impossible. More likely is that one or more of the many subglacial volcanoes, some of which are known to be active, will erupt at some unknown time in the future. But what about the eruptions below the ice? Because of the enormous thickness of overlying ice, it's unlikely that volcanic, volcanic glass, uh, gases would make it into the atmosphere. So an eruption would not have an impact like that postulated for Takahe. But the volcanoes would melt huge caverns in the base of the ice and create enormous quantities of meltwater. Because the West Antarctic ice sheet is wet rather than frozen to its bed, imagine an ice cube on a kitchen worktop. The meltwater would act as a lubricant and could cause the overlying ice to slip and move more rapidly. These volcanoes can also stabilize the ice as they give it something to grip onto. Imagine that same ice cube snagging onto a lump-shaped object. In any case, the volume of water that would be generated by even a large volcano is a pinprick compared with the volume of overlying ice. 
So a single eruption won't have much effect on the ice flow. What would make a big difference is if several volcanoes erupted close to or beneath any of the West Antarctica's prominent ice sheets. Ice streams are rivers of ice that flow much faster than their surroundings. They are the zones along which most of their ice in Antarctica is delivered to the ocean and therefore fluctuations in their speed can affect the sea level. If the additional lubricant, quote unquote, provided by multiple volcano eruptions was channeled beneath the ice streams, the subsequent rapid flow may dump unusual amounts of West Antarctica's thick interior ice into the ocean, causing sea levels to rise. Under ice volcanoes are probably what triggered rapid flow of ancient ice streams into the vast Ross Ice Shelf, Antarctica's largest ice shelf. Something similar might have occurred about 2,000 years ago with a small volcano in the Hudson Mountains that lie beneath, underneath the West Antarctica ice sheet. If it erupted again today, it could cause the nearby Pine Island Glacier to speed up. The volcano ice melt feedback loop most dramatically of all, a large series of eruptions could destabilize many more subglacial volcanoes. So a series of eruptions destabilizing the nearby volcanoes. As volcanoes cool and crystallize, their magma chambers become pressurized and all that prevents the volcanic gases from escaping violently in an eruption is, is, uh, in an eruption as the weight of the overlying rock, or in this case, several kilometers of ice. As that ice becomes more thinner, the pressure reduction may trigger eruptions. More eruptions and ice melting would mean even more meltwater being channeled under the ice streams. Potentially, a runaway effect may take place, with the thinning ice triggering more and more eruptions. Something similar occurred in Iceland, which saw an increase in volcanic eruptions when glaciers began to recede and at the end of the last ice age. So it seems the greatest threat from Antarctica, many, uh, many volcanoes, will be if several of them erupt within a few decades of each other. If those volcanoes have already grown above the ice and their gases were rich in the halogens, then enhanced warming and rapid deglaciation may result. But eruptions probably need to take place repeatedly over many tens to hundreds of years to have a climactic impact. More likely is the generation of large quantities of meltwater during subglacial eruptions that might lubricate West Antarctica's ice streams. The eruption of even a single volcano situated strategically close to any of Antarctica's ice streams can cause significant amounts of ice to be swept into the sea. However, the resulting thinning of the inland ice is also likely to trigger further subglacial eruptions, generating meltwater over a wider area and potentially causing a runaway effect on the ice flow. This is uh, on the conversation by John Smelly, Professor of Volcanology, University of Leicester in England. And this is a Creative Commons uh, article. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece 
in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.